Hello and welcome, MATLAB was originally developed to be a matrix laboratory, in its present form it has been greatly expanded to include many other features, but still maintains inherent matrix and vector-based arithmetic at its core. We will be covering the basics of MATLAB including, examples from scalars, vectors, matrices and basic plotting. The purpose of the channel is education for all especially in this tough time of pandemic COVID-19. The course pathways include subjects of communication systems, signal processing, control systems, AI, and IT. If these courses are of interest to you, please subscribe and share with your colleagues, friends and class fellows. An array is a collection of like elements. Many engineering applications exist that use arrays. MATLAB is an acronym for Matrix Laboratory. A matrix, as you know, is a two-dimensional array. MATLAB stores data in arrays, and performs all numerical computations using arrays. It's important to learn arrays if one wants to apply MATLAB effectively. A vector is a one-dimensional array. Examples are, a row vector and a column vector. A single element or scalar is also stored as a one by one matrix or array. In MATLAB, different arrays must have distinct names. The name may be of any length but must begin with a letter, and may contain digits and the underscore character. A common way to create matrix or array, is by simply assigning a list of numbers to it. For example, A, is scalar, B, is one by two row vector and C, is a 3 by 3 matrix. Note that the use of semicolon in the list is used a row terminator, otherwise, as a statement terminator in which case the values assigned to a given variable aren't printed. Here we present an example of practical importance. The upward velocity of a rocket is given at three different times in the table that shows velocity versus time data. The velocity data is approximated by a polynomial as v of t equals a, t square, plus, b, t, plus c for a time of 7 seconds, that is, between 5 and 12 seconds. We have to set up the equations in matrix form to find the coefficients a, b, c of the velocity profile for data fitting. Substituting the three data points values from the table gives, the three equations on the left and simplifying gives the three equations on the right. In the matrix form, this set of equations can be rewritten simply as, the matrix A is multiplied with the column vector, X, with the unknown entries A, B and C. The result is the velocities vector B. By finding the inverse of matrix A and then multiplying with the column vector B, to find the column vector of unknowns. Let's see how it's done in MATLAB. We define an array B with entries 106.8. 177.2, and 279.2. Note the entries can be comma separated or spaces between them. The ascent at the end of the closing bracket of array represents the transpose operation. Using the ascent, we define initialize the three data points v1, v2 and v3 of three different times. Next we form the matrix A from these three columns. Note that the size should be the same. We can find the unknown's vector x, using the inverse of a and then multiplying with vector b. We find that, a equals 0.2905, b equals 19.69 and c equals 1.086. After knowing the unknowns, we can simply use a polynomial by putting the values from vector x. We can set a time array with difference of half second between 5 and 12 seconds using the colon operator. We can use the values of unknowns which is stored in vector x and calculate the velocity using a single polynomial v, t. Note that, the dot used represents elements wise operation, in this case, time square. It can also be seen that, when the inverse of a is multiplied with a, we have the identity matrix. The plot of velocity versus time is as shown. On the x-axis of the plot we have time values from 5 to 12 seconds in increments of 0.5 second. On the y-axis, we have the corresponding velocity. 
Note that at each discrete time a circle is placed. The grid command enables the grid lines on the plot. We are going to a live script to cover some aspects of MATLAB. Recall that the roots of a polynomial y equals f of x are those values of x, where f of x equals 0 or is the equilibrium point. For quadratic polynomials with real number coefficients, the roots may be real numbers, and, or, pairs of complex conjugate numbers. For a third order polynomial, the roots may be either three real roots, or one real root and a complex pair. For a second order polynomial, the roots may be either two real roots, or complex conjugate pair. Hand calculation of polynomial roots becomes impractical as the order increases, hence, we often turn to a numerical solution. The MATLAB function roots, p, finds the roots of a polynomial with coefficient vector p, that is, r equals roots, p. A fourth order polynomial with coefficients 2, 5, 10, 7 and 6 is given. In MATLAB, there are a variety of standard 3D plotting functions. For 3D plots, the functions used are, mesh, with parameters, x, y, z, plots a mesh type surface defined by matrix z. x and y are either vectors of the x and y range values, or the corresponding grid matrices. Surf, with parameters, x, y, Z, plots a shaded surface defined by matrix Z. The contour, with parameters, X, Y, Z, generates a flat map containing contour lines of the surface defined by Z and the mesh C with parameters, X, Y, Z, generates a mesh plot with a contour plot sitting in the Z equals zero plane. Examples of polynomials and three-dimensional plots are shown. To evaluate the diffraction pattern of a square aperture, the code is shown while the output is as shown on the right. The plane is generated from x and y in the range minus 10 to 10. The output z is obtained from the corresponding MIS grid points and a surface plot with light is shown for the absolute value of z. How to add title, x-axis label and y label are shown. The font size is also set to 14 giving you the freedom to set the size of your choice. MATLAB provides numerous built-in functions such as UPS, ROUND, SIGN, EXPONENTIAL and so on which operates on the input vector X. Unlike pocket calculators, the trigonometric functions always assume the input argument as in radians. The inverse trigonometric functions produce outputs that are in radians. The hyperbolic functions are defined in terms of exponential functions and there are no special concerns in the use of these functions except the date and h function which requires an argument that must not exceed an absolute value of 1. Examples code of some functions are shown in the left. Simple data analysis functions are provided in the table along with short descriptions. The analysis of data coming from analytical calculations, computer simulations, or actual experimental data, is a requirement in most all engineering projects. With MATLAB we have a powerful set of predefined data analysis, and as we may see later, we can also write custom functions as needed. The first group of data analysis functions to consider finds maximums, minimums, sums, and products of vectors or columns of matrices. Examples with MATLAB codes are given. Please pause the presentation and verify the output. When the data we are operating on is viewed as the result of an experiment or the sampling of a population, then we may be interested in sample statistics. The functions mean x, var x, and stdx can be used to find the mean or average of the elements in x the average squared variation of x about its mean and the square root of the variance, respectively. Hopefully, you have enjoyed the presentation, and has contributed to or refreshed your knowledge, in the next presentation we will be showing a live script with code and the corresponding output. MATLAB codes will also be provided for better understanding and visualization when we go along the course. The objectives are to study less but smart, stay safe. Please like, subscribe and share.